Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, oh, Swift Sneak, <laughs> still getting used to that. In today's episode, we're actually heading back to the Deep Dark because we're going to start a project that's probably going to take us a little while to complete, I think, but it's going to be super fun to take on. We are going to return to that ancient city and we're going to turn it into a survival base. I still have the Dripstone Cave base, I still plan on working on that here and there, but the Deep Dark has really captured my attention. So I'm going to bring over a bunch of obsidian so that we can set up a nether portal over there, link it to our nether hub, and convert it into more of a survival base. I've got my obsidian, I've got a bunch of other stuff on me that I actually had from my previous trip to the city because we have not been idle in the meantime. In fact, I actually spent one of my weekend live streams clearing out all of the remaining skulk shriekers from this ancient city, except for two. One of them is up there on the top of the giant reinforced deep slate portal and that one I'm pretty sure is not going to bother anybody. It's up there by the ceiling, it doesn't have any skulk sensors around it, it's not really going to be a problem if we leave that one there, and that's basically there as a backup for one that is down here. We have, in this little box of wool over here, the last remaining naturally generated skulk shrieker and a couple of skulk sensors nearby it as well. Because skulk shriekers that you take away from an ancient city, if you break them and place them somewhere else, will not spawn the warden when they are activated, and so I wanted to make sure that we kept at least one Skulk Shrieker that was a naturally generated one inside of this city so that we could use it to spawn the Warden at some point. And we're going to study a little bit more about how the Warden behaves, how it generates, whether we can farm it, all of that kind of stuff. But we're going to do that over the course of several episodes. In the meantime, though, I had a couple of things that I noticed while I was exploring here a little bit more thoroughly. And the first was that I had missed a couple of the loot chests. The majority of them will look like this, where I've got like a couple of soul torches and that, you know, junky music discs that I've got plenty of already and I don't really want. But over here, provided that I can find it anyway, whereabouts did it go? Yes, here, 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 this one, this one. Ha <laughs> ha! We have ourselves four more fragments of Music Disc 5, which means we can add them to the ones that I'd already got and we have more than enough to complete Music Disc 5. So everything we needed was right here in this ancient city. We even got an extra set of diamond leggings to add to our growing collection of diamond leggings. But there we go. We get Music Disc 5 in this world very very happy about that so there's no time like the present let's throw down a crafting table and let's make that it's got a surprisingly similar glow to the recovery compass very excited about this. I'm not going to play it right now because honestly it's a little bit creepy. We'll maybe save that for a bit later. But we'll stash that back in the shulker box here along with all of the rest of the disc fragments. And I believe there was actually one other chest in here that I left. And I can't remember exactly where this one is, but I think I marked it with some blue wool. Yes, this one. This one right here had a lava fall in front of it, which is why I didn't see it before. This one had one music disc fragment left in it as well. So chances are we could have found that if I had looked a little closer, but I was definitely trying to avoid it areas that looked a bit more dangerous, which this one kind of does. Another thing I missed about this ancient city, which is something I'm very glad we returned to, although it would have been an absolute nightmare to check this out the first time around, is this. This room here is a little bit different. There's some ice here and there, although some of it has already been swallowed up by Skulk. Over here on this side of the room is an iron trap door. But first of all, this is a really devious thing on the part of the developers and designers, actually. If you step up through the main entrance into this room, you are greeted by a couple of pressure plates with note blocks that play a chime. Actually, quite quietly, because I have the note block sounds turned down right now. But they will play a chime, and any skulk sensors in the area are naturally going to hear both the click of the pressure plate and the note block making a sound. So that's going to trip any shriekers that are here. The shrieker in this setup was actually down here next to the ladder that leads down from that trap door. So basically anything I did in this area, if a skulk sensor could hear it, it was going to trip a skulk shrieker. And so that was a huge problem. I ended up spawning the warden here a couple of times, hence the wall bridge leading away from this. Eventually the best thing to do, because obviously opening the trap door anyway would have been setting off the shrieker constantly, plus the sound of us climbing down down the ladder, same thing. I ended up digging through the floor once and then placing some wool down here that would allow me to drop down quietly and then I took out the shrieker and we were able to open this chest which contained a few kind of useful supplies. There is some packed ice in here, there were a bunch of snowballs just kind of scattered around in little pockets like this 
and there were some baked potatoes and a couple of other bits and pieces as well. It's very different loot from the remainder of the loot chests that you'll find here in an ancient city, which are mostly the stuff that we were gathering earlier, swift sneak enchanted books and, you know, golden apples and that kind of thing. This one is really designed to give you the tools you need to distract the warden, hence all of the snowballs. Unfortunately, it would mean summoning the warden to get down into here, but that may not be the case in your ancient city. Be cautious when you're around these, but take a look for them if you are exploring an ancient city, because chances are they can provide you with some of the tools that you will need, and the Shrieker generation is random based on, you know, the world seed or the way the Deep Dark generates. A few different things can vary there, so you're not guaranteed to have a Skulk Shrieker in and around these rooms. It's just unfortunate that it happened to me. Now, I've got a stack of sticks and a stack of coal in my inventory here, because one of the things we're going to do today is take down all of the different wool paths around here and try and light this area up comprehensively. I want to make sure that a lot more of the ancient city is visible if we're going to be using it as a base. And while obviously this is in a big dark cavern, we don't need to worry too much about the shadowy areas here because they're part of the deep dark biome, so they won't be spawning mobs, on Java Edition at least. And in the meantime, we can walk around lighting this area up just so it's a little bit easier for you folks to see what we're doing, and so it feels like a more welcoming environment if we're going to be using it as a survival base. But all the different colours of wool here kind of make it feel like a kid's play area to me. It kind of feels like a ball pit or something now, or like a fun house kind of foam pit area. So in the meantime, we're going to be trimming out all of the wool around here using my mending and unbreaking set of shears. I've left a bunch of it floating in the air, but hopefully we'll be able to get rid of all of that. And this should make the whole thing look a little bit more as the developers originally intended, while hopefully not spawning the warden. Okay, so it still needs a little bit of lighting up here and there, and I think there's probably still, yeah, one or two blocks of wool that will make themselves known as we go around here, but I've managed to clear up most of this, and if you notice a drop in levels, it's not because I've died, it's because I decided to put efficiency 5 on these shears, which allows me to insta-mine wool instead of having to break it very slowly. So that's really sped up this whole process for me, and honestly, Swift Sneak is really nice when you're bridging around like this. Not to mention the fact that basically any time I wanted to repair my shears, since they have mending, all I needed to do was switch to a fortune hoe and dig up a large area of the skulk with the shears in my offhand because there's just tons of XP comes out of this stuff. It's really quite good. But now I'm left with a bit of a decision to make. Do we want to restore this ancient city to what it formerly was? Do we want to clear out all of the skulk and then try and rebuild the sections of the city which have clearly fallen into disrepair? Like these archways over the top of here, do we want to restore all of those, clear up the holes in the walkway and the areas where this is clearly meant to look like some of the archways have fallen in. Do we want to do that, or do we want to try and put our own spin on this place? Do we want to come up with a bunch of other stuff and build inside and around it in a new kind of style? And I'm kind of leaning towards that, to be honest, because I think even with the skulk around, even with all of this made out of deep slate, I think we could add some really cool touches. One of the things I liked about having bridged around with all of that wool is that it added a lot of colour to the area, and while I don't plan on making this like a colourful looking place, playground or something. I do think we can add some interesting accents that will complement some of the structures that are already here, whilst not necessarily being what was intended for them. And in the process, we'll get to see a bit more of the anatomy of this place, and we will probably be able to hunt down some more of the skulk sensors that are hiding in cheeky places like this. Also, it does look like there is still one more skulk shrieker up here that I need to take out. That's just on the border of the deep dark. It's not even in the ancient city at all. Bam! Nailed it. Oh, and there's another one right over there. Oops. <laughs> And there was a third one around the corner as well. Oh my goodness, these things are cheeky. All right, there's so many sensors right here as well. But I think we got all of them. And now, yep, yeah, none of those are tripping any shriekers. Fair enough. Man, just when you think a task like that is done, it turns out the world kind of doubles down, doesn't it? With all these sensors around, one of the things I would love to do, actually, is to create a few more skulk sensor activated contraptions in here. E either it's something that, you know, we stand on a skulk sensor and it activates over and over again, producing a kind of redstone clock that will help us farm resources, or maybe we just use it to create a bunch of fun automatic doors in the area that open as we approach them and close once we've gone past. One thing's for sure, I don't think I'm going to be doing too much with the Skulk Shriekers, even for the sake of some cool ambience down here. I think I've had enough of them screaming at me. But like I was saying, the choice here is really between renovation and transformation, and I think I want to go the transformation route. But the first thing we'll want to do is set up a nether portal here so that we can return to the deep dark in future. And I 
I know exactly the place to do that. You see right here, you see where there's this set of rings, this kind of set of archways. This is really meant to be the entrance to the ancient cities. It's sort of like the gateway. And obviously half of it is broken off on this side. I'm not certain if that's part of the way this city generated or if that's an intentional thing. But of course, we could always extend it to the left as well as to the right and make this whole thing feel a bit more symmetrical. Either way, if we're going to be transforming this place, I could put my nether portal like directly in here so it really becomes the entrance entrance to the city itself, but I also kind of want to see this as I step through the nether portal as the gateway to our new domain. And so I think what we're going to do is set up a nether portal here in the wall instead. So we step out and this is the first thing we encounter. By the way, I'm not certain if I gathered up all of the wool. I might have let a couple of blocks of it despawn on the ground or something, but it's pretty clear that I used a lot of wool to raid this city. So make sure you bring like close to a shulker box of wool with you, I think. And this is a great time to note that I have once again neglected to bring a flint and steel with me. But that's okay. That's okay. I can craft one. Let's see where this takes us. Shall shall we? Mmm, Basalt Delta, not good. Although, yeah, I'm wondering if... <laughs> I'm wondering if this is mainly due to the fact that there is a large lava lake here and this is just the best coordinates it could find. Anyhow, finding our way back to the nether hub is actually not going to be that difficult because I think it's just over this way. Aha, there we go. In fact, this actually leads more or less to our destination because we are returning here to the end and not just for the central end island. We might actually head further out into the outer islands to get what we want because what we want is a pretty large amount of this. Because if you're looking at the color palette of the skulk blocks, it's kind of similar to the ender chest. It makes a really neat contrast with end stone. And of course, end stone has end stone brick and a bunch of other stuff with it. Likewise, if you put a skulk shrieker around here, which is obviously a weird thing to do, but the developers have said that these protrusions coming up from the skulk shrieker are meant to be more bone like, but they really match quite well with end stone, especially when you're surrounded by it like you are here in the end. Likewise, the skulk catalyst could almost be growing up from the landscape of the end. And I wonder, let's aggro one of the locals and see exactly how much skulk these guys actually spread. Ooh, <laughs> that's pretty good actually. Although my health is not, yikes. I had no idea he did that much damage to me. I think I need to turn hostile creature sounds back up. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of repairs at the Enderman farm. But anyway, if we kill a lot of Enderman around this stuff, it is going to spread dramatically fast. And notably it does replace Endstone as well, which is a really interesting thing because there are some substances that Skulk won't actually spread to and take over. We saw that with the Cobblestone in the Zombie Spawner dungeon a little while back. Obviously around the fringes it turns into Skulk Vein because it doesn't have enough power to convert the entire block, but that is something we might need to be cautious of if we are building over there in the ancient city and we happen to have any Skulk Catalysts around. I am curious if the same happens with Endstone Brick though, so I'm going to build myself a little Endstone Brick shelter here. We're going to fight a bunch of Endermen underneath here and see what the Skulk Catalyst does to the surrounding blocks. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. Oh, there's still one who's mad at me. Oops. <laughs> this guy must have gone around the back. I didn't see him. And it's really cool watching this stuff move. It's like seeking out which blocks to convert. But no, it seems to have left the end stone brick alone. Perfect. Because while I wanted to keep the regular end stone for texturing, I think end stone brick is the thing that I'm looking forward to working with the most. I think it's going to add a little bit more structure to the ancient city, and it's definitely going to add some lighter areas in amongst all of the skulk and deep slate. Anyway, cool though it is to have farmed this much skulk once again, I think we're really here for the end stone. So I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff in a shulker box here. We're going to put down the ender chest so I can grab a couple of other boxes. We're going to spend a bunch of time out here on this island mining up some end stone and we're going to use that to start our ancient city transformation. Well, we've got a decent amount of end stones so far. I think we'll call it there for now, just so we can check that this is the right kind of material for the job. End stone is one of those awkward cases where, unfortunately, having haste or even haste 2 on a beacon plus efficiency 5 doesn't make it instantly mineable. It makes it ever so slightly faster to use haste, but I didn't have the materials for a full tier 4 beacon. I figured I might as well just use haste 1. It's also pretty blast resistant, so gathering it with TNT isn't all that viable either, but we'll see if it's worth it once we start putting this stuff to use in our ancient city. Now, I did set my spawn back at the ancient city right before we left, so hopefully this should load me into the right place. Yeah, there we are. Perfect. Right back here. We've still got a couple of skulk sensors to get rid of here and there, but thankfully no shriekers. So my plan around here is actually to convert a lot of this into endstone bricks. 
We're going to keep some of the regular end stone. And then what I want to do is try filling in some of the walls here and see how that ends up looking. We might have to reposition some of these lanterns. Maybe we'll have those hanging out more centrally and remove some of the surroundings here. We don't need to worry too much about staying on the paths, considering we're not worried about tripping skulk sensors anymore. But I think just the end stone and the deep slate on its own is a bit too much of a contrast. We really need to bring in more of this color in order to make them fit together, I think. So what if we swap out some of the wool here or carpet over the top of it with cyan? I don't know, I kind of like that. I think maybe having cyan next to the end stone like that and then having bits of grey peek out where the deep slate columns are could look quite nice. Maybe to give it a bit more texture we can kind of alternate between the carpet and a full block of wool just so it feels a little bit more textured. We'll definitely need a lantern around here. The soul lanterns are still a little bit dim. They produce less light than the standard torch lanterns do but I already like it better with the cyan wool kind of tying stuff together. We'll need to return to our sheep farm and get some more of that. Although that leads into other other materials. We've got stuff like warped wood. We can maybe work with a couple of other of the cyan blocks, maybe even some cyan terracotta if we want a smoother texture than this. And since mud has a little bit of blue in the texture, and I've talked about wanting to use that a bit more like a stone block if we're using it in walls, I am curious to see if mud would make any difference here. I admit one of the things I do kind of like about these hallways is how much of the rest of the city you can see. You really get that sense of space the entire time you're in here. So maybe we'll leave a couple of windows here and there. We don't need to worry about it on this side because this is just like the wall of the cave. But that leaves us open to window decorations. We can put some flower pots in or something, really kind of change up the tone of the ancient city a little bit. And to go in alongside the skulk vein, I think we really need to start introducing a bit of glow lichen as well. That will also give the lighting a bit more of an even feel, but it might be a nice bridge between the skulk vein growing everywhere and maybe a bit of glow lichen as it transitions onto the endstone brick. Now, can we start to incorporate something like a row of skulk catalysts as a decorative accent. You know, I kind of like that. I think it works better if we have some skulk blocks above that. Although at that point, it definitely needs to be framed by deep slate or continue down for a little bit further into the hallway because otherwise it just feels like a, a kind of messy patch of the wall instead of something a bit more organized. But having it pop out of the wall like that, I think that's pretty cool. I really quite like that. Yeah, maybe a little bit of glow lichen here and there just to break up how hard that line is between the two of them. It doesn't have any actual depth to it. It doesn't actually like recede into the wall by a block, but the fact that the deep slate textures sort of stand out a little bit more against how flat the skulk blocks are, that actually kind of works. It kind of creates this illusion of depth there. It is going to be pretty expensive as far as the use of skulk catalysts go though, and that might be where farming skulk catalysts from the warden is something I would consider. Because if you kill the warden, yes, it does drop one thing, a skulk catalyst. And wait a second, I haven't seen the bottom texture of these blocks. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I've not really looked at the texture files for these or anything, so I was not aware that they had a bottom texture like that. That's kind of neat, actually. Not exactly the most desirable texture for a ceiling, but I don't know, it could work. We could find some uses for that somewhere. Yeah, I like that. It feels intentional when it's symmetrical like that. This is really starting to take shape. The real question is how much of the skulk vein and skulk blocks are we going to leave behind? How much of it do we really want to feel like an infestation and how much do we want to use as more of an organized pattern like this? Because it kind of blends it up with into the ceiling, but is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I'm not entirely certain yet. It does go really nicely on top of the cyan wool though. I kind of like that as a carpet pattern actually. So if we really want to clean this place up, we could just leave it as a carpet pattern for the cyan wool and strip the skulk vein out of every other spot in here. Yeah, part of me really wants to do that and we'll turn these walkways up here into full dark oak wood walkways so that there's no skulk left. We remove all of the wool from these pathways and we just turn all of that into something more like this. Let's try that out just on this stretch of corridor and see how that looks. Okay, so from the outside it looks a little different and it still needs a couple of exterior details, I think, for some of this. I really want to build up the outside walls of some of these corridors, but on the inside, it's looking a little bit more organized. Yes, there's still kind of skulk everywhere, and some of it in the floor is intentional, some of it in the ceiling, and on the walls is not, but what we've got is quite a nice looking corridor, I think. It's still a bit chaotic, but then this whole place is going to be a bit chaotic. I kind of like that vibe for it, and I've got this section of glow lichen kind of across the wall, almost like a mural of sorts. It kind of complements the fact that the skulk 
catalysts are here in the walls. And I think for the most part, this is getting there. This is pretty much how I want it to be. There's a couple of exits to this corridor naturally, which are part of the design. It kind of centers on this section here, and then there's a few slabs stepping down into the floor of the cave around so that it leads to any of the other structures around here. Although it doesn't lead directly over to this. This is kind of like has its back to that spot over there so I don't exactly see this quite lining up in the way that I'd hoped but maybe we can move some stuff around maybe we can just get rid of modules like this entirely in fact there's like a little kind of section down here underneath this bathing pool or whatever it is where there's a couple of candles and stuff so I hadn't noticed that that was part of the details of this area before there's also another staircase down here which is a little smaller and in a slightly better state of repair but once again that doesn't seem to line up directly with anything or lead directly to anything it's just a modular way in which these corridors generate but overall I'm quite happy with this wall design. I kind of like that. Maybe we can work on a couple of other bits and pieces that are going to add detail to this place. We need to center some of these lanterns and stuff like that if we can but the combination of lighter walls obviously light coming from the torches and a bit more of an organized pattern to this place makes it feel a lot more pleasant to walk around i think so we'll try and apply some more of this approach as we branch out into the rest of the city but this is just going to be the access corridors to the entire place we might repair this one here where bits of it have clearly broken away if i'm going to continue to work with wool and wood around here i also probably want to get rid of some of the lava although that's more or less done all of the work that it would be doing to burn up any of the surroundings. Ultimately, we have a lot of space here to work with, and you'll also notice the entire time I've been making this video, absolutely no mob spawns. It's so nice working down here when you don't have to worry too much about the warden or anything. Like I've said in the past, this is basically an underground mushroom island environment where you don't really have to worry about light levels or anything like that in order to get mob spawns. The light levels really around here are just so that I can see the structure of the ancient city a little bit better. If we wanted to, we could tear down the entire thing and rebuild something else in its place, but I kind of like working with the structure that we already have, and we'll work on some of the exterior details and stuff like that here and there as well. We'll continue this transformation project, I think, for a few episodes and see what we can come up with. But in the meantime, we'll skip around to a couple of other projects. I really want to start building a frog light farm, and we have a basalt delta right outside the nether portal here, so that might potentially be something we can do there. Although I also know where a treasure room bastion is, though, so setting up a frog light farm around the magma cube spawner seems like a pretty safe bet, too. Either way, we will leave those projects for a future video. For now, that's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see built here at this ancient city that we're going to be remodeling. And in the meantime, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.